So as you can see here, I just launched a new app on the App Store. And this was one of the longest projects that I've worked on for somebody else. And to give you a little bit of background, uh, one of my buddies, Sutu, uh, Sutu Eats Flies, he does a lot of great work. And he reached out to me probably back in 2022 uh, over the summertime to see if I was interested in working with this client. He didn't have time to work on it and he referred me to it. And so, you know, very often, you know, whenever I do get projects, it's often because like Sutu or one of my friends uh, reached out to me uh, because they thought that I would be good for it. And with the context of this project, it definitely spoke to that because as I got deeper and deeper into it, it really, I, I feel like it really leaned into my strengths in terms of uh, being a developer and a creator and a, you know, quote unquote, sort of like consultant and, uh, you know, creative director and stuff. Uh, in the space that I operate, you know, I, I always joke around that uh, as a XR creator, um, I'm considered a generalist and, and that label has plagued me for throughout my career. And it's been really difficult to like get projects, but because I'm a generalist and to be successful as an XR creator, you kind of have to do a whole bunch of different things and you might not be the most, uh, you might not have the most expertise, but you're able to pull off things in an interesting way that lends to the project, right? Because with XR, it can incorporate software development, it can incorporate user experience and design, product design, animation, both 2D and 3D, particle effects and visual effects, um, illustration, uh, you name it. All that stuff could go into it because at the end of the day, you're working on an experience. And that experience is supposed to really give you an opportunity to uh, have a deeper connection with the work, whether it's a product or whatever. And so I, I say that all because I, I started off this project, you know, just as a consultant and it was just a, a couple of months of consulting to uh, work with this company uh, that allowed, was really interested in trying to figure out the whole augmented reality space and whether uh, one of the clients that they had would be interested in it. And I'll go deeper into the client when we get into the app, but really one of the things that uh, stood out to me was that uh, a lot of the stuff that I do with Island Fever really lends to uh, exploring and, and providing a reference point for what is possible in uh, the augmented reality space. And I think to that point, like I started Island Fever as a portfolio piece to get hired for projects. And I think that, you know, this is a, is a great point in terms of how my approach to Island Fever has helped me in my career. And to anybody that is really interested in getting into the AR space, you know, the, the best thing that I could give you in terms of advice is to, to work on projects that you want to see in the world. And then through manifesting those things from ideas into actual projects, then you will provide a reference point for other people to actually uh, create stuff based off of the work and be inspired by the work that you do for themselves. And, and often they have ideas once they see your work, they have a reference points for ideas that they've been thinking about themselves, but didn't know how to approach it. And so because of that, I think that's one of the reasons why I try to be as transparent with the work that I do. And then I always try to reflect on it. I would say that medical school sort of forces you to reflect and, and think about things and think about the reasons why, and, and really honing in on those reasons why, because that, that's a lot of the stuff that often uh, you know, will become defining factors for you in your, your creative journey or in your journey in general. And so I sort of pull a book from like medical school applications and, and my experience being in medical school and in the field of medicine to, uh, to really integrate that into uh, my work as a XR creator, um, both as an animator and an educator and a, and a consultant for people that often are looking for interesting things to do and utilize the technology for it. And so from there, you know, I, I was able to definitely check out a, you know, a whole bunch of different things, but, you know, going into the demo, when you open up the app, it greets you with everything and then you're right into the actual stuff. And one of the things is you'll notice that there's a face filter and 
you know, one of the great things about the face filter is that it really pops out and stands out to you. But the user interface, they really wanted to have this sort of like carousel scroll effect. And so I wanted to find a way to create that. With Unity, it's kind of difficult with different things like that. But when you press a button, you know, it allows you to take pictures and share. And once you're able to share, you're able to share using the, the native uh, iPhone and Android features, which is an implementation. I thought it was really simple, but it, it really, really works for me. And then you're able to go and learn more about the brewery. And so when you go and press the uh, bottom right button, it allows you to uh, go to their website so that you could check out all their stuff. And so, you know, the way I approach apps and AR apps are sort of extensions of brands and identities. Since AR is really like mobile based and it's kind of like akin to having a, an app on the app store is very much like a, a website uh, for a brand or whatever. And so giving people an access to do that. And so this is the Alchemist Brewery and they have a long history. Uh, they're in Vermont and they have a location. It's very eclectic and it really speaks to this, you know, sort of independent, small business brewery sort of situation and, and that I'm very much used to in the Pacific Northwest. And I think that through the work that they do, they're able to create stuff and create experiences that allow people to feel more connected with community and be included in the, uh, you know, in the in the spaces that they operate in. More importantly, they are really, really big on art and expression. And so you could see a lot of the stuff that they have uh, is murals. It's it's very colorful. It has a very unique feel to it. And it and it allows you to feel included in the work that you see. And so it, it's not just alcohol. It's not just you know, having a good time at a bar, but it, it really speaks to experiences that are shared. And that could be through beverages, that could be through art, that could be through a lot of different things. And I, you know, being, I, I feel very fortunate to work with clients like this because it really speaks to my mission and what I wanted to do as a creator. And so, you know, to that point, you know, it allowed me to uh, create different experiences and and really connect those experiences with the uh, using augmented reality, very much like this mural where it's hanging up in the, you know, the location, they point their phone towards it. And through that, you're able to get more information about the mural. And then also through their website, learn more about the artist. And that that was really, really cool. It's a, it's a great implementation. And that was one of the features that they wanted to have was they have a, a space that is pretty much a gallery. And so what does it look like to have the gallery experience be enhanced uh, in their location through augmented reality? And so being able to create a gallery experience was really, really great because it it, it really speaks to the, the desire to have more connections with the artists and the art and allow people to do interesting things, right? And so uh, that was the gallery experience that we did with it. Uh, and then we had our face filters, which are the first things that you actually get with this. And, you know, face filters like Snapchat are tried and true. And with this, they wanted to have face filters that really spoke to the identity of the uh, different flavors of cans and characters that they have. And so this one is the Heady Topper, where you have uh, exploding pops and stuff going out of your head. You have the actual beard of the uh, Heady Topper mask, and you can see that you're able to really embody that experience very much, very, very well. The second one is the uh, focal banger and very much like this one, instead of the hops going out of the, out of the top of the head, they're coming out of the ears. And, uh, and it really speaks to, you know, just sort of having that taste and of a, of a really good beverage and then being able to, you know, have your mind blown from it quite literally. And I think with those two experiences, it allows you to, really embody that with face filters that are that are super simple. And so it, it uh, you know, these are things that just sort of these experiences write themselves in, in one way, shape or form. Then we have our can experiences and the can experiences are my favorite because they have so much depth to them. Not only do you have the animation, the 2D animation on the can, but when you tap the screen where the can is, then you're able to actually have hops explode out of it. So if you keep tapping it, then that's the more hops that could explode out of it. And you'll see that the can uh, has animation on it. 
and it has a real time, uh, you know, sort of effect that gives you the impression that it's full of liquid. And so it, it's so much dynamic, you know, engagement with this thing that it, it, it really speaks to the power of augmented reality packaging. And so that was the focal, that was the, the heady topper can. Now the focal banger can does the exact same thing, you know? And so you have the animation when uh, the 2D animation on the can, and then you also have the, uh, the simulation of the actual liquid uh, within the can so that when you turn over the can, you'll see that the liquid uh, maintains a level of, um, you know, realism in that simulation. Like it, it's, it's not an empty can, it's a, it's a full can. And again, when you tap the screen uh, where the can is, you're actually able to have the, the hops explode from it. And so these things were, were really fun to do uh, because it allows you to create more interactions with it to where if you don't have, a, if you have an empty can, the can is a collector's item at this point. It, it allows you to create some interesting things with it. And I really, really enjoyed uh, creating these experiences because uh, it allows you to really explore the, uh, the great things about augmented reality uh, in cylinder form, in different form factors from the face to the actual cylinder uh, that, you know, are, are, they're just really, really fun. They're really, really fun. And so the tracking worked, everything worked in, in a way that, that makes sense. And I, I'm glad for people to, to try them out because having it in your hand and being able to play around with those different things is, is really, really great. And, uh, and it, it's, it, you know, I can't really complain about it really. And so the next one is the actual coaster augmented reality experiences. And this one, I sort of pulled a play from the uh, comics that I do, where you're actually able to create depth in the experiences because it's using regular image tracking. But what I wanted to do was be able to create something that allowed you to uh, have a portal into the experience, very much like the comics that I do. And so they have four different, they had four different filters, uh, four different coasters. And so with it, you're able to see the coaster and then see the coaster get augmented and there is a 2D animation in it and there's a, a level of depth that you get with it. That's that's really, really fun. And I'm, I'm glad to be able to provide those so that it's subtle and it works, but it, 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 it makes a lot more sense for people to actually, you know, engage with these things. And mainly because it provides you with an opportunity to explore and really explore the uh, the worlds that are created, not only in the actual uh, gallery, but also, uh, you know, sitting at a bar or just sitting in, in, the, in the regular spaces that you would. And so it creates for an engaging experience with the users that I personally just like really look forward to doing with the work that I do in comics and being able to apply some of that approach to something that's not a comic book, but is a piece of physical media that often has multiple use cases. Uh, and by adding a use case to it, it makes it uh, a lot more special in the ways that uh, makes sense to us. Because when you see it and when you experience it, it just makes sense. And that's the best part about it. And then the next series of uh, images were actually augmented reality murals. And, you know, with each one of these different murals, they had a unique little flavor to them. And I think that sort of speaks to the different spaces that uh, the murals occupy within the gallery. And so being able to have each one do something unique was really, really fun. With this one, it was really centered around just post-processing effects and how you could just change color and how the, the changing in the color really creates an interesting experience, even though it's super simple, right? Like it just a regular post-processing effect to change the hue, but that becomes such a mesmerizing psychedelic thing that like you don't realize how impactful color is until you actually had that experience. It was to the point where I was like, dang, you know, like this experience feels so much crazier because of what it's actually doing and not because it has all the animations and stuff. And then going to the actual, you know, water mural, which is called the underwater mural, you have a 2D animation with like some particle effects to where there's like a slapping of the, the water. And then there's like rain effects to it as well. And, and that was really fun. And then we have our sun and moon god. And the sun and moon god was an interesting one because 
they wanted to have a because this mural this mural is huge right it's it's huge in the location and so they wanted to have a like glowing ball just like bouncing back and forth like a volley and so being able to take that uh, particle effect and then be able to move around it and have it actually work within it it's, it was really really fun and so I, I enjoy creating these different murals because they all had different uh, unique things to it that, that really spoke to it. And being able to bring those to life and have those stay true to character is really interesting. And so then we have our, our rapture mural, which is, uh, you know, having a, a bunch of different elements of the actual mural come to life in these interesting ways with animation and, and then have those things loop. It's subtle. Uh, but it but it really works because it it uh, brings a lot of life to the things that are already dynamic in nature. And so something as well as uh, having PNG sequences and, and integrating AR into it, it, you know, it works in a way that it makes sense. With the Galaxy Mural, this one was also really interesting because, you know, we had it, we added some uh, post-processing effects to it, some camera effects to it. Uh, so that it gave a little like mystical feel to it. But then we also added some uh, like a gallery, like a spinning gallery in the background. And so all the stuff that was black, we actually made that transparent with an alpha layer. And then uh, behind all the, the white uh, texture, you see this gallery that's spinning in the background. And so it gives you this sort of like dreamy, mystical feel that is is really cool to look at and it really accents the the actual mural because it, there's a lot of stuff going on with it and so each different mural had its own little challenge and being able to lend to the strengths of it were the were the best parts about it because it allowed you to create things that were that were really interesting and um you know as an artist i i really appreciated being able to have the opportunity to to work with the team of, uh, of a couple of people to bring all these things to life for the benefit of the actual murals and the experiences being augmented. Because at, at a foundation level, augmented reality is really meant to, uh, in, in the, in, in, you know, it's in the name, augmented reality is really meant to augment the world around us, right? And so at a base level, you want to have the actual experience and that experience stands true uh, as an experience nonetheless. But then with the AR stuff, you want to overlay either sound, uh, motion, visual effects, digital, digital media on top of that so that it enhances it, right? It augments it, enhances it. And so you have that traditional neuro experience, you have that traditional experience with art and then with the AR, you have an extended experience. It's not different, it's just enhanced. And often with this approach where we were taking all these different things, at the end of the day, like the experience you have will not change if, the, if your phone dies, but if you have battery in your phone, then you can improve the experience so that it allows you to uh, so that it allows you to have a deeper connection with it so that it resonates with you a lot more and so with these experiences it was all about building on top of the foundational experience without changing anything from it uh, so that when we augment it it's only an added value and it's not anything that's reductive because if you're if you're going around and you're creating and adding ar but you have to take something away in order to add the ar then that means that you are not doing you're not in integrating augmented reality in a way that stays true to its purpose, which is to enhance. If you are taking stuff away to replace it with AR, then you're inadvertently changing the experience and the nature of the experience. And that becomes a whole different thing altogether. And so with these, I'm glad that I was able to, you know, spend a little over a year, uh, you know, sort of working with uh, working with this client to be able to explore the true nature of, of augmented reality, which is to take experiences, augment them and enhance them from their true nature without changing the core elements of what that experience is. And then providing opportunities to uh, share those experiences and uh, communicate 
and have a deeper connection to those experiences with people uh, around you. Because, you know, at the end of the day, it's all based off of your phones and uh, being able to use your phone as an extension for deeper connections with not only the intellectual property, but also the brand and the, the location and also have that shared experience with others around you in that physical space. I think it's the happy medium of art and technology and community building uh, in and of itself. And so uh, if you ever find yourself in Vermont, I, I really hope that you're able to take the trip to the Alchemist Brewery. Uh, you can download the app. They will definitely have uh, opportunities there to facilitate it. And from there, being able to uh, really just share the power of immersive experiences with everybody else. And so I, I'm glad that I was able to uh, be a part of that journey with them. And I was glad to uh, really take on that that role because I, I told them initially, I was like, you know, aside from like Island Fever, like this is a, going to be a very ambitious project. It incorporates so many different things and has so many different experiences in it. It's it's really heavy. Like it, it's it's a uh, it's not something that you could just create in a month or overnight. And uh, and because it's so integral to their identity and their brand as a uh, as a brewery, uh, you know, I really enjoyed taking on projects like this because I know that compared to sort of marketing approaches with AR and stuff. This is this is marketing, but it's also it's also art. You know, it's also like a, a brand extension. You know, it goes beyond just, you know, a a push for some sort of gimmick. This is this becomes an integral part of what they what they do, which is to innovate through art and connect that with the products that they have. And so I, I'm again, I'm super fortunate. And uh, and so if you are super inclined, definitely check them out. Uh, check out my virtual reality book. Uh, I call it a virtual reality book, but it's really like uh, how to create with Unity book, uh, cloaked in virtual reality, uh, but it's enhancing virtual reality experiences with Unity 2022 on Amazon. And it's, uh, I did it with Pack Publishing and, uh, and it's 500 pages. It's sort of the holy grail of, you know, how I approach uh, not only AR work, VR work, but just work in general using the Unity game engine. And then if you are ever so inclined as well, definitely check out my project Island Fever, um, uh, particularly Island Fever Augmented Reality. It's a it's a 10 book uh, graphic novel series that I uh, use to explore what it's like to create augmented reality based experiences for the sake of enhancing print media to improve the reading experience. Uh, if you are ever so inclined as well, uh, definitely go check out uh, the AR augmented reality headset. Uh, it's the headset that I created to interface with my uh, Island Fever augmented reality uh, book series because it's really difficult to enjoy a fully augmented book if you have to hold your phone in your hand. And so by placing it in the headset, you're able to create some interesting experiences and uh, feel more immersed in, in the, the stuff that you're working with. And uh, last but not least, uh, you know, follow me on social media, uh, follow my project Iltopia at I-L-T-O-P-I-A. And again, you know, check out uh, Stuck on an Island. Uh, that's, a, you know, the moniker that I've used for you know, years at this point, going a little over 10 years, and it's uh, it's still rolling. And so as I continue to, you know, uh, pursue my MD, PhD uh, in integrative neuroscience and figure out ways to use art and technology to incorporate uh, meaningful experiences that can improve our, our health education and our health literacy, uh, and eventually be a doctor and, you know, try to you know, get my whole life together as a, as an adult, um, you know, and I encourage you to just continue to tap in and, and be able to, um, really just, you know, be able to, uh, share the, share the experience with me because this is, this has been a fun journey and being able to create stuff with, uh, with augmented reality or create stuff in all these different areas and then meet cool people along the way and, uh, and inspire them. That's all this is for, for me. And so, uh, because otherwise I'd just be studying and 
I might watch a TV show and stuff like that. But, uh, but aside from the point, you know, uh, I hope to share more experiences of projects that I've worked on uh, over the years and, uh, and show just sort of the reasoning behind them because I think that by doing that, it allows me to uh, share with the world the, the things that are special to me about the work that I do and why I continue to do the work that I do despite going to medical school. And so, uh, and dealing with the stresses of that. So without further ado, you know, that, that's, this, that's a wrap for the Alchemist Brewery XR experience. And I hope that you get an opportunity to play around with it when you, uh, when you can.